How you all doing? Hope you're keeping safe out there. Today is the second part of my build of a uh, Castle Grey School. Now, if you saw my last video, you'll see that I talked about how I was going to build a, well, a new Castle Grey School out of the old one I had when I was a kid. I had grand plans of multi-level interiors with removable walls, re-sculpted interior walls to give great detailing, and, um, yeah, I uh, can't lie, those plans kind of failed. I think, in theory, it worked really well. I just came across a few uh, real-world impracticalities. Now, yeah, look, here's the basic like design idea I had of the front and back of the castle, with the side walls done, and well, side wall, side walls added, and interior wall detailing added as well, so it didn't just look like a, a hollow shell. And my idea was there'd be plenty of room to put my Masters of the Universe Origins figures in, plenty of space inside to take photographs, to set up little dioramas and stuff, and it'd work really great. Just one slight problem though, I quickly realised that with the thickness of what I would have to do with the walls, as well as the thickness of the new walls I was going to put in, there really wasn't going to be much space in the middle. And it was going to be a real pain to actually get to, to paint, to do everything. And it turned out, yeah, it was going to be much more hassle than it was actually going to be worth. So I decided to approach this in a different way. Rather than making a castle grey school I can go inside with figures, I was going to create what was effectively a swell a statue of Castle Grey School, or one where you can sort of go round it, but not inside it. But let me explain. Like in the old design, I'm going to start with the front and back of my classic 1982 Castle Grey School. But this time, what I'm going to do is I have several sheets of I think it's three inch thick XPS foam, or two and a half inch thick XPS foam, I think. I'm going to have three layers or three sheets going between the two halves of the vintage castle. I'm going to cut and just roughly sculpt those lay uh, those uh, sheets of XPS foam so they continue on the shape of the castle from the front to the back. Uh, as you can see, I, I did that. It I think I looked pretty good. All I did was just lay the halves on top of a sheet of XPS foam, draw around them, uh, one for the front, one for the back, and then sort of approximated a midpoint between the two for a third one. And I had to use a couple of offcuts just to get the middle one where I want it to be. Um, yeah, and then I just put them to, uh, I glued them together, a couple of cocktail sticks to just hold it in place with a glue set, and it worked pretty well. Now the whole thing I'm then going to mount on top of another piece of XPS foam, just uh, just form like a base, just so it's more secure. And then I've got something I can then actually glue down to, and it's just more gluing points to really make the whole thing solid. And of course that bottom base thing I will also sculpt and. Uh, model to sort of like ex extend the castle out slightly give it more of a scenic base and then as you can see i've got it all glued down to this piece of xps foam i had the whole thing cable tied together while the no more nails and the uh, gorilla glue set it took about a night for it to dry all in all but you know it's pretty good uh, as you can see the inside actually hollowed it out so i could get inside to paint at some point i'm actually thinking i might put some lights inside this thing um so having some Way to get into the centre was a book, some way to get inside of it was a oh, decent idea to have. So, once that had dried, well, the glue had dried, I set about sculpting in some more detail, just bringing the polystyrene so it to continue the sculpting round even more. I added polystyrene stones and uh, bricks and just detritus around the base of it just to blend everything together. It's really very rough, very rough shapes, because um, like the classic Castle Grey School is very organic in its sculpting. So I wanted to kind of continue that with the way the uh, base interacted with it until all melded together. I also decided to put some, a little bit more of a, like a standing space on the roof. Something that figures could stand on, because that kind of is what happened in the old comic books. There were battles on top of the ramparts and the roof of the castle. Um, okay, well, onto these sides themselves. I decided to actually get some air drying clay. Probably, I thought, I want to add properly sculpted detail, but the XPS... Well, it works, it's kind of a very different texture to the original plastic here after it's been coated and sealed. So what I decided to do was get some air drying clay, put that across the centre bit and sort of blend it in, 
sculpt it in and sort of try and continue the, the pattern onwards as well as just like blend it all together as you can see I think it works pretty well obviously the air drying clay is a dark grey I used it to um, make sure the things on the base were really secure to it just trying to add all this detail in I used it as well as the foam to fill out the um, are they vamparts? The, the bits at the top, the, the tower tops I admit like it isn't the best where the uh, the tiled roof bit is, but it doesn't look too bad, I don't think. After I let that dry for, ooh, I think it was about a day, I put uh, just a quick layer of um, very watered down polyfiller on it. That just added a slightly rougher texture. And then I sealed the whole thing down with Mod Podge mixed with some industrial strength black ink I managed to get from work. As you can see, like this is this was only like two tablespoons, oh, two capfuls of this industrial black ink into a big bottle of Mod Podge and this stuff is no joke it is pitch black and it looks really good on that I think as it, the whole thing went it was a really great base coat and everything was sealed down perfectly so obviously my plan then was to paint the castle walls green just a unified green and bring everything together maybe with some dry brushing and then do the base as a, a stone base something like um, like a mountainside, that sort of thing. And this is it with the first spray. I actually managed to find from uh, the range, they're like spray cans out there, the one that was just called Leaf Green. And I think it's actually perfect for the classic Castle Grey School colour. It's. I think this is like probably like the colour they used back then. Obviously, not the exact same colour, but not the same brand or anything like that. But it's as close as I think you're going to get. So I sprayed the whole thing in that leaf green. Then I gave it a dry brush with a slightly lighter green. Uh, followed by another successive dry brush with a little bit of grey and yeah I think it looked look really good just to bring out that stony detailing in it, all the textures and everything um, I also went about painting in some of the wood, wooden panelling on the front of the uh, castle as well as the sort of the these towers I put a uh, faux wooden floor in I just wanted to paint that as well just to add a bit more colour variation to it and yeah I think it worked really well I then went around afterwards and added in some, um, ooh, it was like a, a flock, no, I was using flocking mixed with a little bit of PVA, spread that all around the outside just to give a textured, sort of hillside, earthy, um, grassy texture, something like that. The door I decided to paint, um, I just took the whole thing brown, uh, well no, I, I did it black first with that uh, Mod Podge and black. I then went over with a nice brown, I then dry brushed the brown with a slight light of tan. Went over the metal work with some Games Workshop gunmetal silver. Gave that a black wash and a highlight with some lighter silver. And then like the castle emblem, the cross shields, I went over that with bronze to begin with. Then I went over with a verdigris uh, paint from Games Workshop. Um, I can't remember what it's called. It's, it's a technical paint they have designed to make bronze look like ancient patterned eroded bronze. I think you'll agree. It looks really good and with that the castle was done and as you can see I, I think it looks really good it evokes the look of the castle from the original mini comics because it is at the end of the day it is the classic castle but with I like to think I brought it a bit less away from being a kid's toy to being a bit more of a display piece and as you can see that it fits really great with these new origins figures the painting on it I think works with being no detailed, not overly detailed. I've not like painted in grout or highlighted each brick individually, but I think it works. I think it does look really good. And then the opening chasm inside, yeah, that works. Okay, yeah, look, let's go into a bit more of like a, a detailed finish view then. Okay, here's the front of it, all painted up, all done. Sorry, you can see a bit more of my workspace than you normally can. I have to bring the camera pretty far back to get this thing in. It's it's pretty big. Um, and as you can see, I managed to keep the darkening of the eyes and the nose, that ca classic Castle Grey School, like the, the blackness of them. I think that's come out really well. The wood detailing, the grass, the uh, stone or the mountainside it's on. Uh, as you can see, just going around it, I've added the stonework in, the fallen stones, the rocks. All in all, I think it looks really, really good as a as a Castle Grey School. That that Alcala co mini comic design. I tried to replicate that as close as I could. I really like the fact I managed to get the jawbridge to open as it did before. You can, you don't have to use the um, 
the power saw to open it, but you can. The locking and close opening mechanism is still perfectly fine in there. And they painted all the inside black with some, it doesn't really show here, but some green um, dry brush on the inside, so it just looks chasmous and like you can't really tell how deep it is. But I said, I might add some lights in there at future points to give that mystical appearance. Um, yeah, no, just I'm really happy with that. Look, I'm I'm just blown away with how much like the original toys green, that green spray paint is. It really cool. I've, I've still got some in case I ever want to do like a point dread or I might do some interior hallway pieces like for display and uh, shooting on. So it's gonna be really nice to have that classic Castle Grey School green. As you can see, I've added all these details onto the roof. It's just it's a nice platform to have your figure stood on. Just having a battle, just a fight to the death across the roof of Castle Grey School is pretty damn epic, you must admit. <laughs> and if you are like a classic filmation fan, you can stick He Man in front of it and it just looks really cool. <laughs> so, yeah, that's it for the front. Just turning around a little bit. This is one of the first sides I sculpted. The clay sort of crackles slightly as it, dry, as it dry, which I don't really mind. It sort of added the look of ancient, worn away, eroded stonework. I, added in this little window because I just wanted another source of light to be in there and as I said if I want to add some lighting effects it's another, it's another avenue for which you can escape and maybe I don't know stick a figure in there trying to climb through on a rope or something it's just it's something just to have there as a something to break up the uh, the wall and yeah I'm smelling like my sculpting my sculpting skills aren't the best and that roof of the thatch bit uh, doesn't look right but uh, I can live with it for the moment. Flipping it down to the back, which I think it's actually like, I don't like the the Castle Grey School skull front is like iconic, but I still really like the back. It's just full of detailings, or full of details, such as the, uh, the all the different shingled roofs, those the loops, the little windows, the like little towers. I've always liked the back of Castle Grey School. It's always been I think, probably my favourite uh, aspect of it, especially like the door at the back. I was really tempted to see if I could if I could uh, cut through that to make it be movable. I decided not to at the moment. I might go back and do it another time, because I can still get your hand in there to to work, because I kept everything hollow on the inside. It's always really cool, and I've also had the idea of Skeletor using it as a, like a, a secret rear entrance to the castle. Like I think it had that on the um, classics, you know, the Master of the Universe classics toy lines. Uh, castle Grayskull had that, but it was Scareglow's key that opened the secret back door. So I, I might do that at some point. That'd actually be pretty cool to be fair. Go around to the side. I just let this one be a bare wall. I think it actually looks slightly better than the other one. I think like the stone brick texture has come out a bit more, but it still looks like it's not the best, I'll admit, but I think it, it's okay. I might actually get some like vines or ivy or some vegetation effect just to glue on there to make it look like there's, I say, ivy or vines grow, uh, growing up there. Maybe to give figures like a way of climbing to the roof. It's just a thought. Well, yeah, that's it. This has been the Castle Grey School I've built. I know it's not what I was originally planning to build, or how I was originally planning to build it, but I'm really happy with how it's turned out. It's pretty much exactly what I want aesthetically. It's that, as I said, it's that classic Alcala mini comic look. I know there's a few things I need to add to, like it needs the the laser blaster in there, which I'm going to scratch build, as well as the uh, the flag, which shows like who's in, who's controlling the castle. I can knock one of those up pretty easily. They won't do them over the next couple of weeks when I get a chance, but I'm really happy with how this turned out. It cost me a little bit to get the raw materials and a bit of time, but I'm really happy with it. And as you can see, it just looks really great with these Masters of the Universe Origins figures. Well, that's it, folks. I hope you've enjoyed this video and the one that preceded it of me building this. If you have, please leave a like. If you've not subscribed, please subscribe. If you've got anything you'd like to say or ask me, just please leave a comment down below. And um, yeah, that's it. So until next time, folks, I want you to stay safe, stay sane, and keep on rolling. And I'll see you all next time. Ta-da!